My name is Tom Overton. I'm a professor here in dairy management at Cornell, and my major focus is research uh, with emphasis on cow health, cow nutrition. I also work, uh, have an extension appointment, so I work out with the dairy industry, with farms, with veterinarians, and with nutritionists on various aspects of, of cow health and, and management. And I also teach uh, students here at Cornell, both in, in the undergraduate program and in the vet school. My major area of focus over, the, over really the last uh, uh, 25 years of my life really has been research and its application relative to, to, to dairy cattle physiology, to nutrition, and, and a lot of exposure not only in the research side but also on the practical side working directly with, uh, with farmers and, uh, and those that work with farmers. So our BST uh, stands for recombinant bovine somatotropin and that sounds like a, a big mouthful but let me break it down for you. So somatotropin is, uh, is a hormone that's present in all animals and it's really the major hormone responsible for directing where nutrients go um, in you, me, or the cow or anything. So um, somatotropin's in growing animals from the standpoint of supporting growth. Uh, it's important in lactating animals in terms of directing nutrients toward milk production. Okay? The B stands for bovine, so bovine is cow and the R stands for recombinant, which means it's made through biotechnology, like many, th many things used in, uh, in, say, in human medicine, like in almost all insulin is made using this type of technology uh, that diabetics take, and many other compounds that are used in human medicine are also made using similar types of technology. So the cow makes somatotropin herself, okay? And we've known since about the 1930s that if we give her additional somatotropin, okay, she will make more milk. Okay, so we've known that for a long time. And it was in the 1980s when, we, when uh, it became possible to potentially uh, make somatotropin in a way where it could actually be, be given to cows to increase milk production. So RBST is given to cows by injection and, and the, the product that's used in, in the US and in other parts of the world is given it uh, every two weeks. Uh, so a cow would receive an injection of, of BST every two weeks um, on the farm and really she'd receive that for probably the last uh, three quarters or so of her lactation. The main reason why a farm might be interested in, in using uh, something like, like BST or RBST would be to increase uh, milk per cow um, in, in the herd. And it increases milk per cow by about eight to 10 pounds per cow per day, which is a pretty significant amount of, of milk at the, uh, at the farm level. So the most recent evaluation of, of BST um, and the safety of foods uh, from, from animals receiving BST was just done in 2013 and published a few weeks ago and reaffirms all previous findings in, in that the, the milk from cows treated with BST is equivalent to milk from, from cows not receiving our BST and that there are no issues of concern from a human uh, food safety standpoint. I think it's important for people to know that, that, that almost all foods contain trace quantities of, of hormones or hormone-like compounds. In the case of, of cows treated with, with our BST, okay, the two hormones that one might think about are the actual concentrations of BST itself in milk. Again, very, very small quantities of BST in milk. And, and those concentrations are the same in cows that either, either don't receive or receive our BST. Okay, so there's no difference in, in concentrations there. And, and in fact, BST is a protein hormone, okay? And protein hormone or proteins are digested by our system. So there's also been a lot of discussion over time and, and also evaluation in terms of whether RBST use affects actually the, the health of the cow. And, and this was actually, it's, it was looked at certainly prior to approval uh, by Food and Drug Administration in 1993. It's been evaluated a number of times since then. And actually in the last year, um, all the research that's been done um, using the forms of BST that are actually used out in, out in the dairy industry, it was evaluated again, the, the effects of BST, not only on production, but also on health of the animals. And kind of the bottom line is that, uh, is that this, uh, this, this research summary showed that there was, that certainly cows that, that receive our BST do make more milk, okay, per cow, uh, but there's no effects on, on health of that cow, on mammary gland health, um, on mastitis, on things like lameness and, and all other areas they evaluated in terms of the health of the cow. 
So oftentimes the, 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 the question of is there a test that I can use to determine uh, whether cows receive RBST or not um, you know, can be conducted. And, and the reality is there's no test, there's, you know, the, the, the milk is the same. Okay, and, and so by looking at levels of, of whatever in milk, you're never gonna, you, you certainly can't use that as a potential way. And there really are no, are no tests to differentiate cow, milk from cows uh, that are treated with RBST versus those that are not. So, you know, again, you know, the milk is the same, uh, regardless, of, of, uh, regardless of RBST treated or not. And so therefore, so therefore even, the, even the, the rationale for having a test is, is kind, of, kind of moot. Because if the milk's the same, there's no reason to, there's A, probably no reason to test whether it's different or not. And even if there were a test, they would find that they were the same, they were equivalent. If we want to summarize, you know, the overall discussion here, you know, RBST is, is safe from a, a cow perspective. It's safe from a human perspective. And so the issue is, uh, is, is why, why doesn't everybody use it? Okay, well, certainly, you know, at the farm level, of course, farms always have a choice. Uh, for whether they use or, or don't use any particular technology, and BST is one of those things. But I think there's there's actually a bigger issue here in that uh, you know we also know you know we are concerned about uh, about environmental impact of food production in in the United States and other places, and technologies like BST and BST actually this has been evaluated actually reduces the environmental impact of food production. And so whether you want to look at uh, if you want to look at it per unit of milk produced. And you want to talk about things like uh, like the land required to support that milk production, the number of cows required to support that milk production, the amount of manure that's produced, the amount of greenhouse gas pr that's produced. All those things are lower if we use things like technologies like RBST. You know, as we, as we look to feed, uh, continue to try to feed a, a growing population, and we need to be very conscious with how judiciously we use the natural resources that we have. And I think that that. You know, technologies like RBST. You know, if we can use those technologies to to uh, to improve milk per cow or milk production per animal, um, and again in ways that are that are safe for the cow and safe for the consumer, I think as a, as a, as an overall uh, population, that's a benefit.